Carl DeMaio is campaigning as a fighter who will shake up Congress to fight unfair tax hikes, cut wasteful spending, and secure our border. Okay, he is joining us here in studio to talk more about some of his major policy proposals, especially the Secure the Border right. Initiative. Uh, good morning, Carl. Nice to see you this good morning. Good morning. Yeah, there's a lot of topics, but uh, securing the border is one of the highest priorities uh, that we need to set um, because it's not only about uh, uh, national security, because a lot of uh, in, you know, dangerous factions can, can try to get into our country across uh, the border if it's not secure. But it's also uh, having a major impact, illegal immigration, uh, on our communities in terms of crime, in terms of increased uh, public welfare expenditures. And it's an issue of fundamental fairness. Mm -hmm. We have people waiting to legally get into this country, uh, and it's a lengthy process. And then you have people who basically break the law and cut in the line. So I've got a five-point plan. Uh, and I'm sometimes mocked by my opponent, Mr. Issa, for the plans. But I really think that members of Congress, any politician, ought to have specific uh, detailed oriented uh, commitments. And so a 17 page plan, five points. Number one, build the wall and increase the staffing of Border Patrol so they can actually secure the border. Number two, close the loopholes, reform the immigration and asylum laws, because right now the laws are intentionally written to allow illegal immigrants to abuse the, the, the legal provisions. If you come to the border and say, oh, I'm a refugee, I'm persecuted, that's basically your you know, speakeasy secret code to get in. Uh, and then they don't show up two years later for the immigration uh, court hearings. And so if the laws are not working, change the laws so we can actually enforce uh, our, our, our immigration laws. Uh, third, let's actually crack down on the sanctuary city and the illegal uh, immigrant welfare programs because that's protecting and incentivizing illegal immigrants to come here to this country. We should not be protecting criminals uh, in this country with sanctuary city laws. We should be deporting them. We don't want to have criminals re-released on the streets. And the idea that we're giving welfare benefits to illegal immigrants, uh, no. We should be enforcing existing rules that say that you should not be getting welfare even as a legal immigrant for at least five years. You should be here with a job, paying your own way. But right now that's not the case. Fourth, cut off the employment. Enforce E-Verify. Now this is one where the Republicans don't wanna get on board. Here's why. Big business writes big checks to Republicans because they want cheap labor. I'm basically saying, no guys, you gotta cut off the employment draw for illegal immigration, and the only way you do that is by enforcing E-Verify and it, it, fining and, and, and imposing penalties on businesses that habitually are caught employing illegal immigrants. And then fifth, let's make sure that we are a welcoming country. Uh, let's modernize our immigration laws like Mr. Uh, the President has, has uh, suggested. President Trump has a wonderful proposal called the RAISE Act, and it would change the selection criteria for who gets into the country from who you know in a lottery to a merit-based system where we properly vet individuals and we look at what skills they have. Do they know English? Do they know about the, the Constitution? A merit-based system that will make our country stronger. That's the five-point plan. It's on my, my website, bordersecurityplan.org. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanna be specific in the commitments I'm making to the voters. And I, this isn't a, a new issue for me. When um, Josh Newman raised the gas tax, we also found that he, a uh, state senator that I led the recall against, he also raised, uh, he also approved the sanctuary state law. And so we made both of these issues the reason why we recalled State Senator Josh Newman, both mm -hmm. the sanctuary state law and the gas tax. And then in 2018, I led the coalition to, to get the counties and cities in California, controlled by Republicans, to join the president in suing the state of California over the sanctuary state law. I wanted to help the president by broadening out his coalition. And we were able to get San Diego County to vote to join the president in challenging the sanctuary state law. So these are uh, issues that I've, I've demonstrated time and time again that I'm gonna fight on. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of Republicans pay lip service, but then they cower and cave in in Washington. I'm not gonna do that on the issues of illegal immigration. Well, I think from, a, from a, uh, just a, Strictly a voter standpoint, you know, when we hear politicians and sometimes they go to talk and you're kind of confused by what they say. But I think to your credit, this is really simple. Like yeah. you said, it's I mean, it's straightforward. You can just read it. There's there's no gobbledygook in there. No, you know, language is hard to understand. It's just straightforward. 17 pages. And, and I'm putting ideas into action. I'm, I'm working with a, a, a national super PAC. Because if you really want ideas to get done, you can't just say here are here's my plan. You got to have a hammer. 
And I think the president has shown that. You have to have a hammer to force Congress, light a fire under their feet uh, and other body parts so that they actually do their darn job. And that's why I'm working with this super PAC to, to raise funds so that we can target weak need Republicans in their primary to throw them out of office. And after we get done with that, getting the Republicans to, to fall in line, we go after open border Democrats with that same super PAC because the only language that politicians speak is when they lose their jobs or when they feel that they're gonna lose their jobs come election. And that's why the super PAC to put muscle behind this plan is so critical. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to give our president the support in Congress he needs to build a wall and change these laws. Um, now, people can learn about the, the plan, as I mentioned on the website, bordersecurityplan.org, but they can come and uh, uh, ask me questions about it and give me their ideas at some town halls that we have, mm -hmm. also listed on that website, bordersecurityplan.org. Um, Two quick yeah. things, Carl. Um, number one is, what has the response been like at these town halls, specifically when you're talking about going after uh, companies, going after uh, the illegal employment of enforcing the, you know, the E-Verify, number one. And number two, as you know, the, the merit-based legal immigration uh, a lot of people are critical of that. You know, how are you going to decide what are, what's the criteria going to be? Are you only going to allow uh, engineers, doctors, people who already speak English into the country? Uh, what about others? Yeah. Your response to that? Well, on the first part, people uh, find this plan and my approach a breath of fresh air. Uh, they they like the specificity of it, the five point plan, the the, the specific commitments. Uh, it's harmonious uh, it, with what the president is trying to do. So it, you know we'll have both the, the the president working on this. I'll be working on it, and hopefully we'll with the super PAC get other Republicans to fall in line. Uh, but on the second part about the, the RAISE Act that the president has introduced, the president was criticized for that. But I would rather have an immigration um, uh, vetting process that's based on facts, based on merit, based, based on uh, your character, based on your skill set, based on the fact that you can actually pay your own way rather than come to this country and then you know, fall into a, a welfare system. That's far better for our country. Uh, we ask, you know, the best and brightest from around the country, uh, around the world. Um, that has been our, our legacy. People who came here in previous generations came because they wanted a better life and that they were willing to work for it. Um, I, I look at the existing um, immigration uh, system and I, I, I see people who are literally coming here because they want to break the law and they want to take advantage of the generosity mm -hmm. of the American people. And I think that what we need to do is support the president on his proposed change in how we vet people coming into this country. Let's put it where it is, though. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is you've got a lot of farmers, especially in the Central California area, who are undocumented immigrants. They may have illegal documents to turn in to say that they're legal, but they are undocumented, undocumented immigrants. You take those illegal immigrants out of the picture. Then you have all of these jobs. Who's going to be picking the strawberries? Who's going to be going out and doing that farm work? How do you address that? Well, I, I, take a look at the story you just ran, homelessness. Um, I think that there are a lot of people out there who aren't doing what, what they, they, they could do. Uh, and so the idea that we won't have fresh strawberries at, at, the, at the market, so we should allow people to break our laws to get into this country, I, I just find that to be a, a false argument. Um, we should have a, a border that's secure, and we should have the rule of law. You want to come to this country? you follow our laws. Those are the folks that we want. And again, we, we welcome legally every year a million legal immigrants. Mm -hmm. That's why when Democrats say, you know, uh, if you want to secure the border, you're a racist. Excuse me? Uh, the American people are anything but racist. We are welcoming because we open our arms to a million legal immigrants every single year. And I wish more Republicans would have the guts to stand up when the Democrats you know, scream racism. I was at our town hall in El Cajon on uh, Thursday, Thursday night, and uh, the Democrats showed up with uh, uh, bullhorns and tried to drown us out. I call it the heckler's veto. They, they don't like the First Amendment, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, so they show up with bullhorns, try to drown us out. Well, my supporters were just emboldened by that. They, they said, we like the fact that they're out there. What it means is that you actually are hitting a nerve. And I, I said, they're screaming racism out in front of a public library. Uh, and what I say is, no, it's not racist to want a secure border uh, or to, to want merit to be the guide by which we warmly welcome immigrants into this country. So I think we can have both a secure border, proper vetting, 
and we can have great people coming here and, and helping build a better country as we ha have had for generation after generation after generation. All right, Carl DeMaio, candidate for the 50th.